63 years of independence, 63 years of promises, 63 years of patience. It's time for Governance Now. Governance Now. Let's make it work. There have been apprehensions that the global recovery may still be some time away. But it has been seen that the prospects of growth of the Indian economy have further improved in the recent past. The industrial growth during July was 13.8% up from 7.2% a year ago. The manufacturing sector is doing well, growing at 15% in July against 7.4% a year ago. The Indian economy has been able to withstand the recession and has now emerged better on the basis of strong internal demand and the economic policies of the government which are directly encouraging and facilitating infrastructure growth on the one hand and social policies which are based on inclusiveness and rural development on the other hand. In that process, helping create a huge demand for manufacturing and consumer, consumable durables, which is clearly part of the reason as to why the domestic demand is growing so well. The general feeling is that the investors are interested in India's growth story and India is one of the best performing markets today. This is clearly the opportune time to develop growth oriented strategies and policies. We are of course committed to a policy of inclusive growth. There are many clear and apparent reasons for this. As a democracy, it is obviously the only way to ensure stability and generate holistic sustained growth. As an economic strategy, it makes sense to tap the Hitarto relatively untapped rural interland where more than 50% of the population lives. The strategy of inclusive growth encompasses a broad-based set of programs of sustained investment in basic education and health care along with programs of direct poverty reduction through employment and other programs to put purchasing power in the hands of the people and urban and rural infrastructure building programs to expand self-employment opportunities for a huge and growing workforce. It goes without saying that this will obviously impact all sectors of the economy and through increased demand for commodities including metals. The mining sector in India in particular is likely to experience substantial, sustained and stable growth. It is our expectation that the growth in the mining sector will take place through a combination of several factors. One, induction of new technologies including advanced geophysics and remote sensing to detect deep-seated mineralization. Two, absorption of technologies for beneficiation and value addition at core stage. Three, better and more scientific mining practices including mechanization, automation and computerized management systems. Given the history of our ge geological evolution including a large pre-Cambrian shield in the southern peninsula part of the country, there is no doubt that the potential for exploration and exploitation of all kinds of mineral resources is really large. Current estimated resources indicate that as a percentage of world resources, India's position in respect of major minerals is eliminate as much as 30%, iron ore 
coal 8%, chromite 7%, bauxite 4%, manganese ore 3%, etc. These resources are in most cases based on exploration only up to a limited depth. Systematic geophysical and geochemical surveys that are ongoing are likely to lead to new and significant discoveries, particularly at greater depth in respect of base and mobile metals and diamond, in addition to the minerals for which large resources are already identified. As you are aware, the National Mineral Policy 2008 clearly and unambiguously enunciates that 1. Private investment will be encouraged in exploration, particularly for deep-seated mineralization using high-end technology. And 2. The Geological Survey of India will be repositioned to create and provide the data required to facilitate exploration and investment. Accordingly, the Geological Survey of India has been restructured in the form of five missions, including baseline mapping and survey, resource assessment and geoinformatics. The programs that have been taken up on fast track include a national geochemical mapping program on 1 is to 50,000 scale for 68 elements a national geomorphological and dynamic mapping program using satellite data again on a 1 is to 50,000 scale and GSI is planning a hyperspectral mapping program for which a pilot project is already underway in the state of Karnataka. 